Hey guys, welcome back to another RC Glider Basics video on the Armstrong YouTube channel. My name is Thomas and today we're going to take a quick look at brakes on a DLG or any other RC Glider with flaperons. Now just a quick reminder, flaperons are basically these single control surfaces on the wing that will act as both ailerons for banking as well as flaps for changing camber and for braking. By changing the amount of camber on the wings, it changes the amount of lift and drag the wing produces. So with a clean section, the wing is going to be faster with less drag and less lift. And as you add more camber, you'll get a nice increase in lift with minimal extra drag. But once you get past a certain point, the wing will stop producing extra lift and will start producing a lot of drag. And that's what we use to slow down our gliders during landing. Now, before we continue, if you enjoy the video, please remember to give it a thumbs up hit subscribe and click the notification bell icon so you don't miss our future videos and so YouTube knows people enjoy this video and make it more visible to others who are also interested in RC gliders. This really helps our channel grow so we can continue making these videos for you guys. Thank you. Okay, I know a lot of people watching our videos are newcomers to DOGs and maybe RC gliders in general and I do get asked quite often by my customers whether it's possible to just put the brakes on a two or three position switch like this. I get it. If you're coming from powered models or even if you've been flying gliders for fun, you're probably used to having your motor or engine on the throttle stick and flaps on a switch. But for high performance gliders, even for electric gliders, the priority for proportional and fine control is going to be for flaps or brakes and not for power. So for high performance gliders, the flaps are going to be controlled by the throttle stick instead. For powered gliders, we'll usually have the motor controlled by a slider like this. Now we'll go into more detail about that in a future video, but in summary, because we need to be able to use the brakes to get very precise control on airspeed when coming in for landing and to make sure we're landing at the right spot at the right time, we put it on the throttle stick. Now the way you set it up is quite personal, but the majority of pilots will have the stick on top for regular flying and you pull it down when you want to start dropping the flaps. Now there are also some pilots like myself who fly with it on the bottom and push up for flaps, but we're definitely the minority. Just use whatever feels more natural for you. And of course, this leads to the next question. How much brakes do I need? Now I offset my flaperons and try to get as much as I can. So usually that's gonna be 70 degrees or more. And that's enough to slow it down even from a dive, which is very useful in competitions when time management directly affects your score. And of course, just to reiterate, since it's on my throttle stick, I can modulate and control the amount of flaps deployed very precisely. So if I'm coming in at a more shallow angle, I can just use less flaps to slow it down gradually. Now I mentioned offsetting flaperons just now. If you're not sure what that is, check out my video on the subject linked down below. Now there's one more thing. If you've tried to apply flaps by itself without any mixing to your model in the past, you'll notice the nose comes up immediately. So to counteract that, we use a flap to elevator mix on the radio so that as we apply flaps, the elevator gives a bit of down deflection so that the model remains straight and level. Now this mix between the flaperon and elevator, it's not a linear relationship. I would recommend using a five point curve to set up this mix. When you first start to apply flaps, the wings generate a lot more lift. So more elevator is needed to keep the nose down. And as you pass a certain point, applying more flaps only generates a minimum amount of extra lift. So you need less elevator compensation, which is why we would use a five point curve. Now, when you're adjusting this curve, one very important thing to keep in mind is that you should not use the fuselage as a frame of reference. And what I mean by that is when the plane is flying in its regular configuration, the fuselage is nice and level as it should be. But when you apply flaps, the wings angle of attack actually increases. So to keep it actually flying level, the fuselage will have a slightly nose down attitude and it's gonna fly like this. So the more flap you add, the more the nose will point down for the plane to actually fly level. And so if you don't do that and you set up your curve so that the fuselage stays level as you apply flaps, your wings angle of attack is actually increasing and so the plane will lose momentum and it'll stall. And so I think that covers the basics. Thank you all for joining me in today's video. Remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.